All right, I hope everybody's having a good evening tonight. Uh, somebody requested that I do a video on how to add unit testing to an Express app. So if you're not familiar at all with uh, Node.js uh, web development, uh, Express is probably the most popular uh, framework for, for building web applications um, using Node.js. And I think something that's very important uh, when you're building any type of application, but even more important when you're using a language like uh, JavaScript, is that you have a unit testing framework that you use with your code. And the reason for this is that uh, unlike a lot of like statically typed languages, as an example, uh, with statically typed languages, generally when you do the compilation process, you might uncover a lot of different bugs and stuff like that from compile time coding. But when you're building something with JavaScript, uh, since there's no native type system, it's a lot harder to find those types of bugs. And so testing becomes even more important. And so I'd like to go ahead and do a quick video tonight to talk about how you can add a unit testing framework very easily to an existing Express application that doesn't have one. So with that being said, let's switch over to my monitor. And you can see here that I have uh, an Express app. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up so it's a little bit easier to read. hope everybody can read that okay. So if we take a look at this application, we can see it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm setting up a, a router here. It's just pointing to my route slash main.js file. Uh, I have an Express app where I'm adding that router uh, using this use statement uh, or this use method. And then uh, I'm adding a port, and then I'm setting up uh, server.listen using the HTTPS uh, or the HTTP create server. So let's take a quick look at that main. And the main, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I defined these two routes here. And if you can see right here, rather than do these, uh, these functions in place, which is also kind of common for Express, what I've done is I've predefined these uh, functions. And I'm importing them right here using this default.js. So if we come to this default.js, you can see I have this index method. All it's doing is returning back hello world. And then I have this other function here, uh, hello, which takes a parameter called name. And uh, then what it does is it says hello, whoever the name is. So, and then I export those two functions. And so that basically makes the application. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. It may already be running. Hold on, let me check. Looks like it's already running. So if I come over here, and I'll blow this up a little bit so we can see that. So if we come right here, I refresh that. You can see it says hello world. And this is just going to the default uh, default route. But if I come in here and I say hello, and then I say somebody's name, I'll say Bob. It says hello, Bob. So that is, uh, that's the application in a nutshell, pretty simple. So what we wanna go ahead and do is start setting up testing. So for testing, I like using Jest as my test framework. I believe Jest became popular, I think, with uh, React, but it works great with just about any type of uh, JavaScript project. So let's go ahead and add, uh, add that to this application. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna kill the server, and I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna say npm, I for install, jest, and I'm gonna say dash dash save dash dev. And what this should do is this should add, it is a dev dependency in my application. So while that's installing, I'm gonna come over here and look at the package.json. And we can see right here we have this dependencies, which has express, and we'll let that go. And we'll let it go. So while that's going, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna create a, there we go, it looks like it's done. So we can see right here, it added this dev dependencies and we've got Jest in here now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some, uh, I'm gonna add a folder here for my unit tests. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this underscore underscore tests. Ah, I had this problem every once in a while, let me kill that. And I'm just gonna come over here and let's do an LS on here. I'm going to make a directory underscore, underscore, tests, underscore, underscore. And by doing that, any file uh, that I put inside here that's a JavaScript or TypeScript file, uh, Jess will let me run that. 
So I'm going to go ahead and move that one to the trash. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to CD into this. And let's create a file. I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this, uh, we'll say handlers. T.js. And I'm going to create another file in here. I'm going to call this, well, I'm not worried. I'm going to worry about that right now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come in here into my tests. And I've got this uh, handlers file. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to create a uh, some unit testing that I can do. So the first thing I need to do is I need to import in my handler. So I'm just going to come out of here. I'm going to go up a, a directory, go to my routes, and import this default, which has these two these two functions in here. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a describe. When this is a, uh, a function that uh, is used by Jest to basically set up a uh, set up a test, so I'm going to go over here and create my describe, and then inside of here I can put my actual unit tests. So I have some that I've actually already written here, just to keep things short. I'm going to copy this, put this, paste this in here. And so I've got these two tests in here. And what these tests are doing is, one is bringing in this uh, index function, which we looked at before. So we can see right here, when I look at this uh, index function, it's just going to return, return back hello world. So the response.send hello world. It's going to return that. And then inside of here, what I've done is I've essentially kind of mocked out that uh, uh, that function or this object. So it's going to accept a send, uh, send function here. And then what I can do is I can use this expect. This is essentially, it's like an assertion that you can use inside of your unit test. And so what it's going to do is it's going to look and see if the response.text is equal to hello world. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here that I did with Bob. So uh, in the request, I'm going to put in a parameter with a name of Bob. And then I'm going to check to make sure that hello Bob is, is what's returned. So now that I've done that, now we need to set up Jest so it runs. And so the next thing we need to do is come to our back, package.json. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my scripts. And I'm going to add a new script. And I'm going to call this test. And then inside of my test, I can actually come in here and I can put in my command for running Jest. And so since this installs the dev dependency, and I also want to be using it uh, using this uh, uh, ES uh, module syntax, I have to do a couple things. So one of the things I have to do is I have to put in a flag in here to basically uh, make sure that we use the experimental VM modules. So let's go ahead and put that flag in here. That's the VM modules. The next thing I need to do is I need to specify the path for Jest. So I'm going to say node modules slash bin slash Jest. And let me just verify that is the correct directory. Nope. It is dot bin. And then I'm going to add one more flag, but this time it's going to be for Jest itself, and it's going to be coverage. And the nice thing about uh, this flag is uh, one of the things that I like about Jest is that it also will provide code coverage. So the next thing I'm going to do now that I have this, this change made, and I've got my handler in here, and I've got that saved, now I should be able to come in here to my NPM scripts and run tests. So let's see what happens when I go to run tests. And we can see we got one that uh, passed and one that failed. And I think I know why one failed. So if we look right here, we can see here that uh, uh, for the name, it was expecting a uh, bang or an asterisk at the end. Uh, and instead, it got hello bop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that. And this is one of the things that's nice about unit testing is I can come back to my route. So I have this right here. And I'm going to change this so this adds a uh, bang at the end. So now what I can do is I can come back here. I can kill that. And let's run that again and see what happens. 
and that passed. So that's good. That's what we wanted to. That's what we wanted to happen. All right. So now let's do something a little bit sophisticated, more sophisticated. I'm actually I want to be able to run this like I was going to run it as if it were an Express app. And to do that, you really kind of have to mock out uh, the HTTP server. And so there's a very handy module for doing that with Express called SuperTest. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to come back out to the root of my project. And I'm going to say npm install supertest. And I'm going to save dev. And this one should be pretty quick. Okay, now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another file. I'm going to call this one uh, what am I going to call this one? I'm going to call this one routes.t.js. And so now I've got my routes.t.js. So for this one, uh, this one's going to be a little bit more sophisticated as far as what I'm going to be doing. So for this one, I actually need to bring in uh, bring in Express and SuperTest along with my, my main.routes. So I'm going to go ahead and set up those imports. So you can see here I'm using the ES6 style or the uh, 2016 style uh, import export syntax. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and create an app and set that equal to a new Express app. And now that I do that, now that I've done that, I'm going to come over here to the app. And I'm going to say use, and I want to go to the root of or the root path to set this up. Say slash, and then inside of here, I can take my router, and now we've got my my router. So the only other thing to do after this is to actually come in here and set up uh, set up my express routes. So let's go ahead and. Set up my test suite. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to set up a new test suite. So we've got our test suite. And I've already got some unit tests that I've written for this uh, that are basically set up to run against all the different uh, combinations here. So let me go ahead and paste those in. So we can see we have got three tests in here. The first one in here uh, is using the super test. We've named super test a request here, and it's taking in the app, and then it's doing a get on uh, basically on our root uh, root uh, route. And inside of here, I've got a three expects that I've set up. I have one is expecting a type to be returned. In this case, it's expecting either a text or HTML or a character set of UTF-8. Uh, I'm expecting a status code of 200, which is success for HTTP. And then I'm expecting the text to be returned back as hello world. And then I've done the same thing here with uh, name. Uh, here I'm passing in uh, the name here as a parameter in the route. And I'm doing the same thing here down below. So I'm testing two different, two different routes here. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to run the test again. And let's see what happens. And that was successful. So we can see here that this ran. It's giving me my code coverage. It's telling me that I have five unit tests. They all passed. And that is what I wanted. So I hope this gives you a kind of a quick and dirty way of looking at how easy it is to add unit tests to Express. Uh, uh, like I said before, I found this to be invaluable. And I think one of the key things, whether or not you're doing TDD, which is uh, test-driven development, or you're basically just trying to make sure that you're capturing all the different use cases that you're doing, we've just kind of scratched the surface here of what you can do with unit testing. Uh, I'll probably do some future videos coming up talking about mocking, how you can mock, and also how you can do fakes, which also is very important for, for doing uh, unit testing because it realistically... Uh, for instance, if you're connecting to some type of persistent store like a database or a file system and stuff like that, you have to expect that you need to either be able to reset that 
or set up uh, kind of like a fake service uh, to basically describe, you know, what's happening with your persistence layer. So uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give it a thumbs down, but please give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to my channel. Uh, the more people that subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. That helps the YouTube algorithms. The more people can discover these videos and helps me continue making the videos. So with that, have a nice evening.